International help is being pledged for India as it battles a ferocious second wave of coronavirus described by Prime Minister Narendra Modi as a storm that has shaken the nation. Almost 350,000 new infections were recorded in, in India in the latest 24-hour period and 2,767 people have died. But experts say the actual numbers are likely to be much higher. As the epidemic continues to grow, hospitals are under intense pressure with shortages of beds and critical supplies, including oxygen. In the capital, Delhi, COVID is now killing one person every four minutes. Our correspondent Yogi Talimai reports from there. The capital is being ravaged at a frightening speed. With every pyre that burns, India's self-belief is dying. Each funeral is a story of personal loss and national shame. Charanjeev Malhotra has been helping to cremate the dead for decades. Now, he barely ever stops working. I've never seen such a terrifying situation. I can't believe that we're in the capital of India. People aren't getting oxygen and they're dying like animals, he says. We don't even have enough resources to cremate them properly. Outside, Shivangi Mehra is on the phone organizing oxygen for the hospital she works in. Nothing, nothing is being done. I don't know government is sleeping or what they are doing. I am totally disheartened in the situation which I am seeing. Government is a literal failure. A person cannot live stay here in Delhi. A person cannot even die peacefully in Delhi. She's waiting to cremate her grandfather, who died, she says, because there wasn't enough oxygen. This small hospital in North Delhi is facing a daily struggle. I mean, we have been spending sleepless nights since uh, last one week. I mean, we, at times we feel like crying because we are not able to help a patient properly. Every day this is the same scenario. We are left only with two hours of oxygen, three hours of death. Uh, and uh, we are only getting assurance from the system, no oxygen. And so, families are being told to organize oxygen. At one medical shop, we found people with empty cylinders waiting to buy their own supply for loved ones who urgently need it. For many here, the government's promises of rushing in oxygen are coming too late. Families left asking why something so basic is unavailable. Every crematorium we've been to, we've seen body after body being brought in. It's hard for anyone to keep count, but what workers have been telling me is that the real scale of deaths caused by COVID-19 in India is a lot higher than what official numbers reflect. And a lot of those who've died right now have done so because they couldn't get oxygen in time. Jitender Singh Shanti runs a group of volunteers here. Even young people are dying. It's a very bad situation. If it keeps getting worse, we'll have to burn bodies by the side of the road, he says. There is a sense of abandonment in this country. Citizens are stepping up to do what a government should, left to fight a vicious pandemic on their own. Yogita Lemay, BBC News, Delhi. Well, tonight, a first shipment of British assistance to India is leaving the UK. Other countries are also pledging support. Our diplomatic correspondent, Paul Adams, is here in the studio. What kinds of help uh, is being sent, Paul? Well, Michelle, this was really the weekend when the world stood up and took notice of what's going on in India, not least because a wildfire of infections like that in a country as large as India, 1.4 billion people, is clearly not just a local danger, it's a global danger. And given those numbers, any, any reaction seems like a bit of a drop in the bucket. But those offers are coming in. The United, United Kingdom is sending 495 oxygen concentrators, 140 ventilators. And the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, says there could be more. The EU has activated what it calls its civil protection mechanism, where member countries pool their emergency supplies, again with an emphasis on oxygen and medicines. And the US, perhaps stung into action uh, by moves on this side of the Atlantic, has said that it will immediately supply the raw materials for vaccines, and that will involve reverse 
reversing some export controls put in place back in February, uh, and supply protective gear and medical equipment. And Dr. Anthony Fauci, the president's chief medical advisor, has even suggested that the United States could supply India with some of its unused uh, AstraZeneca vaccines. That's a vaccine that has been approved, has not yet been approved for use in the United States, and it's got lots of it, and it doesn't need it itself. It's already supplied some of it to Mexico and Canada earlier in the year, so it is coming under some pressure to do that for India as well. Paul Adams, thank you very much.